John Cabot was born Giovanni Caboto in Genoa, Italy around 1450. He learned how to sail and navigate while working for a Venetian trading company. In his early years, John Cabot claimed that he had vast experience sailing the Mediterranean basin and exploring, and he even claimed he got as far as Mecca. There was great demand in Europe for Asian silks and spices. And at that time, the only way to get them was by going east from Europe and paying middlemen who controlled this route. Upon hearing the news of Columbus's successful voyage to what we call today the New World, John Cabot realized that there were opportunities to pioneer another more northerly route around the territories Columbus had discovered to reach Asia by a water route. Giovanni Cabotto also dreamed of finding the elusive route to the legendary Oriental kingdoms of Asia and India. He traveled first to Spain and then to Portugal to find funding for his expeditions, but failed in both countries. His last real hope was England. So, in 1496, Cabotto moved with his family to the British Isles and changed his name to John Cabot and successfully convinced Henry VII to finance his idea of finding a new water route to Asia. All of the money for his trip from wealthy merchants. From King Henry, he sought only a seal of approval and permission to sail under the English flag. King Henry signed Cabot's charter and agreed that Cabot could claim all the lands he discovered in the name of England. After five long weeks on his voyage aboard the Matthew, Cabot and his crew of 18 landed at what is believed to be the Newfoundland coast. Like Columbus, Cabot thought he had succeeded in reaching the Far East when he had actually failed. John Cabot makes his first landfall in North America, somewhere near Newfoundland or Labrador, and he immediately claims this land for his sponsor, King Henry VII of England. Cabot thought he had discovered a more northerly and a shorter route to Asia than the one that Columbus had found. Although Cabot never reached the Asian coast as he had dreamed, he encountered the magnificent North American continent, formerly unknown to the outside world. He had reached the shores of the New World and given England a claim to the pristine continent the other monarchies had been boasting of. Also, Cabot's routes to Newfoundland and Nova Scotia were bursting with fish. Within a few short years, British and French merchant fishermen would swarm to the area. They get into boats and they catch fish with lines offshore and they bring the fish on shore and dry them and then they pack them on the ships at the end of the summer take them back to Europe. And that fishery fed millions of people for hundreds of years right through into the 19th, well really even into the 20th century and made millions, millions of dollars or pounds or uh, escudos or reals or whatever uh, for various European um, uh, countries. Indirectly too, that fishery leads towards the settlement of North America. In fact, if Cabot had never sailed for England, the United States may not exist as it is known today, for its laws, customs, and its language are derived from the first English colonies, financed largely by the profits of the Newfoundland fishing industry. In many ways, John Cabot is the reason why so many people speak English today in North America. John Cabot, by being sponsored by King Henry VII of England, allowed the English to make a claim for all of North America. Upon his return to England, Cabot was warmly received by King Henry VII, and in less than a year was granted another, larger expedition by the King. Cabot left Bristol in May of 1498. They do more extensive exploring than he'd been able to do in 1497, and they decide to return home before the water got too cold, before the ice encroached. He runs into a number of storms, and he is never officially heard from again. John Cabot should be remembered for two prime reasons. First, he allowed the English to lay claim to much of North America. Second, his crew brought home three Inuit men clad in furs, who within a couple of years were dressed like Englishmen, speaking English, and convinced the English that the native peoples of North Americas could be transformed into Englishmen. <laughs> 